the formidable robot. This is a recent blog post of a user named Junjuzi668, who wanted to get a recent incident out to the public. Here is the following post. If you are a fan of Adult Swim, then you might have heard of Family Guy. Family Guy needs no introduction, as you might have heard of it by now. I grew up with this show ever since I saw season 1 episode 5 of the show. I still like watching the show, until what happened in 2016. It does not fuck with my head anymore, but this still needed to be said. In 2016, Adult Swim organized an event of their direct TV channel known as, The Family Die Marathon, a shitty name for an event I might add. It should have been called The Family die Fun for crying out loud. The marathon in its entirety, consisted of mainly season 12 or 13 of the show. The marathon concluded after the last episode of season 13 was aired during that event. However at the time the marathon has begun, people began to report strange occurrences, bugs and screen issues, with the channel in question. Viewers would catch recordings of what had happened and reported them to Adult Swim. Here are the following issues the viewers caught during the event. Quagmire Quagmire. Instead of Quagmire freaking out over his computer crashing, he stares blankly at the computer, implying that something doesn't feel right, before cutting or skipping to the part where Sonia beats Quagmire and puts him in the back of a car. Sonia looked off. Very off. Her eyes were almost rolled to the back of her head, her mouth was stretched open and unnatural looking, and both of her hands had eight fingers instead of six, not including the thumbs. A Fistful of Meg. The entire episode was very glitchy, although it only happened whenever Meg was on screen for some reason. Not only that, but for a single frame, in the bathroom scene, Meg and her friend's pupils were changed to be looking at the viewer. The rest of the episode had no such errors throughout. Life of Brian. When it got to the part where Brian gets hit by the car, the episode suddenly freezes on Brian. Oh yeah, what a way to kill off Brian in that season show writers, since this episode was made almost 11 years ago. Oh, where was I? All of the audio is cut out and replaced with silence. After a few moments, audio of a man heavily vomiting would play. The background static or fan noise you usually hear in recordings is there too. Wait, that sounds familiar. The audio cuts out again and the episode goes back to normal. Peter Problems. The music is weirdly distorted. It's slowed, wobbly sounding, and off-key. The textures were in different brightnesses, contrasted differently, etc. Peter lacked pupils in his eyes and didn't have any animations, simply gliding from place to place, other than those nothing else happened. Haven't I read those sentences before? Mum's the word. Near the end of the episode, a faint voice saying, Discipline! can be heard, and when it got to where Brian gives Stewie the gun, it repeats the same scene over and over again, with long pauses of different amounts of time in between them. The very last time it would do this would be one where it was glitched, most of the audio removed and blanked out. Only small remnants would remain until it stopped altogether. An image of maggots infesting a white fur dog would appear on the screen for a brief second before the episode ended. The Simpsons Guy this episode had the same changes as Peter Problems, albeit in much worse shape. Meg's glasses appeared to have a crack in them. Certain doors would have holes bashed inside. A transparent video depicting trippy fever dreamish slime would slowly fade in over the episode. When it got to the part where Peter and Homer get into the iconic fight scene, the screen went black, and it would stay there for a bit. I knew something was probably going to happen when the screen went back to the episode, but I didn't know what. Then it started working again. Peter was now standing in front of the Simpsons house. Peter was in other words, a mess. His entire body was covered in black sludge-like material and was moving around his body. Peter's mouth was hung wide open along with the inside of his mouth being a black void, and his pupils were back but severely glitched. The music was this unstable singular drawn out note with various pitches that would play over the scene. The other characters were on the ground. They all looked like they were having a seizure, foam pouring from their mouths with their eyes either rolled into the back of their skull entirely or to the top. They were almost entirely reddened. 
right at the end of this sequence, the long drawn out pitched note would be replaced by an array of obscenely loud noises. Screams, loud thuds, breaking of glass, and so much more. Flashing lights capable of killing a person would overlay the screen. Text would flood the screen reading, we are the family guy, lines upon lines of it. Why do all of these sentences sound extremely familiar? Take my wife. This episode did not even follow the plot at all. It just displayed Peter, Joe, Quagmire and Cleveland with blank smiles on their faces. It didn't move, it stayed as an image. Suddenly everyone's faces morphed into the same creepy mess of open mouths and glitched eyes, and Joe had a giant skull replacing his face. The episode would then end right there. These were assumed to be just technical glitches, according to Twitter, as one of the occurrences resulted in an on-screen graphic being placed on the screen. It consisted of a black screen with white text saying the following. Adult Swim is trying to fix a technical problem, sorry. The bugs lasted for at least two hours. This all stopped after the second hour before the next day started, which was the last before the event ended. Only one episode aired on the last day replacing the others. This episode was titled, A Family Die, and it was 30 minutes long. The episode would skip the intro entirely, and would cut straight to the living room of the house. The house looked like it had been abandoned for at least a few years. The background noise was a very faint, muffled and quiet version of the show's theme song. Peter, still the distorted version of himself, would walk into the frame. He would walk slowly to the couch and turn on the TV. The episode then cut to show the TV. On the TV screen showed real-life footage of a woman dressed up as Lois in a factory-like corridor in a fetal position, sobbing loudly and pleading to set her free from them. A man that looked exactly like Pete Michaels, the director of the show, would then walk in, holding a bucket full of black sludge. He would then dump the liquid on the woman, and she started thrashing on the floor screaming like crazy. She then stopped and got up, and her face looked as if it was torn apart and her teeth could be visible. She also had razor-sharp insect-like daggers replacing her arms, and she was noticeably much taller, about seven foot tall. The man then smiled and said this. The family guys are waiting for your arrival. It then cut back to Peter sitting on the couch. Peter attempted to say something, but all that came out was a gurgled mess. Brian then walks into the frame. He like Peter was also a mess of black sludge, although he didn't look as bad as Peter. His neck and nose were covered the most. Brian then attempted to speak as well, but unlike Peter, I could make out a few words that he said. Interesting. Why happening us? The camera then turned around past Peter and Brian, and we see Meg, or at least what was left of her. Meg was on the floor with her jaw torn off with blood leaking from it. One of her eyes was dangling out of its socket, and her hands and left leg were messily torn off. Meg's face was heavily mauled and melting, and a part of her skull is visible. Meg's body was twitching, implying she was somehow alive. Barely. You could hear her quietly gurgling and choking on her own blood. The pupil of the remaining eyeball was twitching uncontrollably, and darting from direction to direction. There was a bloody text next to her on the wall that said, Shut up, blank. The camera turns around again, this time to the front door and the window. Lois is standing at the window with the distortions, the same as the woman on the TV from earlier. It cuts to the deformed Peter, now standing up and staring blankly with that gaping mouth. He attempts to run to Lois, but he gets pulled back. Peter turns around, and the same man from the TV, now animated in the family by art style, is in the living room. He was holding a leash and the collar was on Peter's left arm. Cuts back to Lois, now banging ferociously on the window, letting out animalistic-like screams of desperation. Lois then gets pulled back into the darkness, and we hear what sounds like the tearing of flesh. It then cuts to the outside of the house, and we see Quagmire standing over Lois's dead mangled corpse. Quagmire looked as monstrous as the others and was rapidly shaking and twitching like crazy. Peter was now clawing at the leash trying to get it off of him. The man then says, You can't leave the family guy, before tugging on the leash causing Peter to yank back. 
Quagmire then lets out a loud duck-twisting scream, and grabs Lois's severed head before throwing it through the window, seemingly in a fit of rage. Peter then runs to Lois's severed head, picks it up and cradles it. Brian during all of this was trying to claw at various open exits seemingly to try and escape, only to get knocked out by the head. The first half ends, and the usual commercials play. After the commercial break ends, a new scene plays. The scene was of Joe in a dark red and green void with Cleveland. Joe not only had his face bashed in, but his left arm was messily torn off, and no lie, he was standing up, on two black sludges acting as his new legs. His right arm was hidden behind his back. Cleveland was standing next to Joe, both of his arms were torn off and had a metal pole through his stomach. His eyes were glowing white, and his mouth looked as if someone put a dagger in his throat. Cleveland then tries to speak, and I could actually hear him make out a full sentence, albeit heavily gurgled. I didn't mean to. I tried to stop him, but he... he... Joe then reveals his right arm and lifts it upward. It was a large buzzsaw-like object, and it started to whir, similar to a chainsaw. Cleveland tries to run away, but Joe strikes Cleveland in the stomach, so fast that it looked like it only had one frame. Cleveland screams so loud that it can be heard all across the viewers' houses. Flash ripping noises can be heard as a giant gas forms on Cleveland's stomach. Joe then stops the buzzsaw, and stares down at Cleveland. Cleveland is entirely sawed in half and was lying on the floor. The floor started to cave in and Cleveland falls in another void, but this one looked more like a black hole. Joe stares down at Cleveland's fall in the void before the black hole disappears. It then cuts back to Peter in the house, but this time he was in his bedroom. He was staring at the door. The man would then walk in, holding a crate. He would then open the crate, and inside were tiny sculptures of every single character in the show, including some of the least memorable characters. He would then place the sculptures on the table next to Peter, and Peter looked at the said sculptures. The man then starts to talk to Peter in a monologue. Here's what I remember him saying to Peter. <sighs> you have a job, Eric. You can't disobey my works. Your wife had to suffer along with you and your dog. And you had the audacity to maul your only teenage daughter to death. Is that how you want to go? Murder the people you don't like? The others can do what they want as they aren't important, but you just want to do what you want to do. Eric, you are the main reason why this company started. You are the one that misbehaves, not them. You are the one that bashed that poor disabled man's head in. You are the one that caused the dismemberment of their limbs, because you can't control yourself. Nothing happens for a while, before Chris appears behind Peter. Chris had tentacles around his arms and he had only one eye. Chris then wraps his tentacles around Peter and lifts him up like a puppet. This is worse than the time Chris says before the only cutaway sequence in the episode plays. It depicted of another real life footage just like the TV scene, depicting someone shaking and twitching as vomit pours from his mouth inside of a decaying old room. An image would then appear, depicting of the fancy area seen near the end of the intro of the show. The background noise now sounds bass boosted mixed with faint bit matched screaming. A new thing suddenly appears, layered over the area before the background becomes intensely absurd and grotesque. The thing was of Peter, Lois, Meg and Chris, all morphed together into one horror of an abomination. Lois was on top of the thing, seemingly sewed back together, Meg seemed to be crawling out of the front of the thing. The background noise consisted of a sound bite of people screaming in a hellfire. More disorienting and disturbing imagery would plague the screen. Family Guy characters being horrifically mutilated like the others, along with imagery I find personally disturbing, such as animals with rabies and organs being pulled out of corpses. Again, I swore I heard that sentence before, but with some minor changes. After all of that, the end credits of the show would play normally as if nothing ever happened, however with no music. After the episode first aired, everything was in absolute pandemonium. Everyone was absolutely destroyed by the episode, Twitter was in a frenzy, calling out and sending death threats to Adult Swim. 
the viewers were all horrified, and were reportedly said that some of them committed suicide, gouged out their eyes, and even cut themselves with a razor, along with other brutal acts like murder and destruction of their property in a seemingly mental breakdown. However, I just stood there in shock, wondering, is this some kind of hijack? I've read a lot of creepypastas about weird and disturbing TV hijackings, and all of them were cliched. Was this meant to happen? When the second day passed, at least 80 people have committed those acts of violence and suicide. The event again, only lasted for two days, but there was an occurrence on the third day, albeit it only happened once before the whole thing stopped for good. It happened in the middle of the episode, Joe's Revenge. I'm glad it's just the real episode and not the shitty creepypasta of the same title. The screen went to black before cutting to Stewie's bedroom. Stewie was in the middle of the room. Stewie looked absolutely monstrous, almost barely resembling him at all. Four tentacles were sprouting from behind him, his legs were replaced with four spider-like limbs, his body looked stretched, his head looked like it was split open, and his eyes were glowing red. Stewie looked at the screen, slightly shaking, before he started mumbling something, but I looked at the captions and saw that Stewie was actually saying something. To all of you at Adult Swim, why do you have to do this to us? Day after day, week after week, you constantly put pressure on all of us. I wish I would shoot you in the head right there and shit on your grave. Think of the poor little kids watching this channel and think that it's okay to have sex. I'm ashamed of myself for even being in this company to begin with. Your shows like Family Guy and American Dad make me sick. Fuck all of you. Fuck it all. You are the reason animation isn't how it normally was. I'm done with all of you, and if you do anything to fess up, you will regret it. Once the last line of text appeared on screen, a loud yet poor quality recording would play of what sounded like a real mental breakdown. It was soon revealed that all of this was a sick message to Adult Swim by one of the voice actors of the set. It was speculated that he planned to quit Adult Swim, but before he did, he made an entire episode by himself to show how he felt towards the staff. The guy was restrained in the Adult Swim corporate office and arrested on September 18, 2016. He was soon charged with computer tampering, sentenced to three years of probation, and fined $4,000 for the signal intrusions and the episode. As for how I currently feel, I knew what he was pulling, because I am actually a video pasta creator and watched numerous videos of hijacking creepy pastas, so I wasn't scared in the slightest. However, the flashing lights did get me as some parts though. But still I highly doubted that this would happen, because it's fiction until now, but this still needs to be said and gotten out because more people need to know about this. This is Junjuzi668, signing off.